T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, to another very exciting episode of the Mid Heaven Podcast. This is your host, the Peace Dilla, and I am with, of course, the lovely Candice Marie. Thank you for having me back. Somehow I forgot my beer. Huh? Is there an extra beer on set? Anywhere? Is there one over there? No. I don't want to take your beer. Hold for beer. We have solved our beer issue. And, and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. This episode brought to you by Coors Light. Oop. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, am I going to get these off now? Fancy. Piggy's up. Yes. I can't block Tiny Mike. Hmm. Tiny Mike is going to come everywhere with me from here on out. That's oh, the yes. decision that I made. You My, have to point it to people like, I need your opinion. I feel like I need to get another one because they're so affordable that I need to have one like in my purse and in my car. Do they come in different colors? Mm-hmm. Get a sorted rainbow. Yeah, I went to a tiki bar the other night and I was like, I should have brought Tiny Mike. I wanted to be like the drunk white woman at the counter that's like, like pulling it out and being like, so what's your sign? Who did your nails? Like that, I want to be that person. I want to, I want to be that person. Maybe Word. I'll start doing like, Tiny Mike on the street. That'd be you know? awesome. The Tiny Mike witch. Big Mike, Little Mike. <gasps> big light, Big Mike and Little Mike. Oh, I like it. Little Mike, big attitude. Big Mike with the Little Mike. Um. Big Mike has a Little Mike, but not that little. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I like how we always end up talking about dicks on this podcast. <laughs> uh, I was talking about a mic, but... <laughs> 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 a mic drop. I've been waiting to do it. I'm going to do it. You guys, if you haven't seen my TikTok, it's fucking ridiculous. Please go and follow it. Hello, friends. It's me. I'm back with another episode of Astro Police. Astro Police. I do <laughs> Astro Police. I'm, I'm just going to start, like, calling people out on shit. That's the decision that I've made. It's it's, it's so necessary. Ridiculous. I was waiting for somebody to, like, I can that. tell you get one so we can do, like, a... Duet. We can do a little little tiny mic duet. That's awesome. I got, like, two posts at the Peace Dealer if you want to hit me up. But Such a perfect time to be talking about duets and doing things together right. because it's fucking Libra season. That's yeah. my Libra dance. It's your Libra dance? Libra season. I just made it up right now. Um, and we can't really talk about Libra season because as, as we're shooting now, we're still in the midst of um, Virgo season. It's all so happening right now. We're it's getting really shit happened. done. But when you're watching this, probably a lot of the things that we're talking about is like just starting to take place. So Mike had made a great point before we even started. He said, obviously, we have to start with the full moon in Pisces because it's fucking psychotic. Yes. So, it's the most magical so, full moon of all time, I tell it's, you. It's, I, like, I look at that full moon and I'm like, I want to hide under a rock. I mean, everything's going to change. The culmination of all the change that's changing right now and we're going to come into the literal, complete, divine, total change, which I think will really put to perspective all the news media and narrative we've come into the past six months. So, I mean... If we think about that new moon in Pisces, it's the completion of that. It's being fully grounded, and she's right. Like, it, it, the, 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 the eerie thing is that day and period might be really peaceful, but it doesn't mean that it won't be any less dangerous because you don't know what you don't know. And I'm in the firm belief that by this period, once we step into Libra, we're gonna be in war, traditionally. I think we're already at war, just not in the traditional sense. Like there's economic wars, there's of course psychological wars, but I think we're gonna have a major world conflict that takes everything that since the last time last year with the riots and the skirmishes and the stuff with, you know, Pakistan or uh, Palestine and Israel. And then of course, Afghanistan, we're gonna see reach ahead. And yeah. from Libra to Capricorn, it's going to be conflict central. Yeah, it's like the return of like the the cardinal squares. Also, if you think about like what happened in 2020, and we saw that gangbusters of planets in, in yeah. Capricorn kind of 
come into some hard grinds with the the transit Mars retrograde in Aries and we saw how that kind of brought up a lot of like it's interesting I think of like Mars is like severing so when I, I think back to like what happened with the Mars retrograde it was that it was like the severance from um, from others it was um, separating ourselves from other people and like the government control and like how all of that kind of like happened and we had the, the lockdowns and everything so this, in a way, especially when you're dealing with transits that are in the later degrees of the cardinal signs, they become super strong because cardinal signs, they start things. It's up to the fixed signs, signs to carry it out. So right. Libra season is starting things season. that is really going to be huge world global events um, in December of 2021 all the way into about March of 2022. So. And I love how you said starting things because we start Libra season off with the opposition to Chiron, which is not going to be comfortable at all. We did it last year, but it was with the T square to cap. So I'm sure they're trying to Saturn will ease things out. But yeah, so I mean, that's like, I guess, like the positive aspect, you know, of Libra season is that um, thankfully, similar to when we had Aquarius season, when we had Gemini season. Both of these seasons, we equally had retrogrades in air signs because they retrograde in sister signs of the same like element. Um, so we have another air retrograde. It will trine Saturn, and it will also trine uh, Jupiter in Aquarius. So it's talking yeah. about where we're collectively going towards the future and future planning. Equally, it will make some aspects to the North Node in Gemini, but not much. Uh, the retrograde Mercury will go it'll drop down from about 24 or 25 degrees of um, Libra to about 10 degrees of Libra. Mm -hmm. So it's a loose trine, but it's not an exact trine, so it's not as sweet as maybe some of the aspects that we're going to see. So Mercury is going to make retrograde to 10? Yes. Oh, So we're already shit. in the shadow. Um, go come, direct opposite yeah, Chiron. The, the shadow crazy. started the last, I think, day or yeah, two. true that. So it's thankfully, the, the, even when it retrogrades back, it'll make aspects to Saturn. But um, So let's talk about the full moon, because right. that is kind of like... <laughs> You know, there's a reason why they say, like, beware the Ides of March. I always think about that when you see, like, <laughs> you know, like the last couple degrees of Pisces, right? Yo. Because it's, like, right when there's that whole, mm. like, that, the last degrees of Pisces kind of reminds me of, like, a bathtub. And when you pull the plug in the bathtub and then all of a sudden you see, like, that, like, cyclone and that si spiral and it gets, like, sucked very quickly into the drain. Mm. That's kind of, like, what this reminds me of. As an alien construct in the natal chart, because I have this natally, when Neptune is on the moon, you could read psychically, you could read minds and auras, you can discover the greatest potential in people. It's a very super psychic phenomena. It connects you directly to the fairy realm. And I love to say that because Neptune is so abstract. Remember, Pisces is I believe. So there's so many people that don't believe in fairies and this abstract. And so we're taking this receptivity not that you have to believe in fairies, but... I believe in fairies? I do, too. They're gangsters. I've seen a bunch of fairies on little, like, motion sector detector cameras and, like, all kinds of things. Oh, I'll, I'll shit. I have a video I'll show you later. It's, like, spooky. Which is cool, because she is probably progressed Sagittarius, which consciously opens the ability to see the unseen and whatnot. So, I don't usually see these things. I, like, sense or clairaudiently hear. But, once again, like, this is why Neptune and Pisces is delusional. Because not, not every... It's seen as delusion, right? Because not everyone picks it up the way they think they do and then now we have the fog and the blurry lines so we're having this vessel contact with neptune it's fully being fleshed out by analytical virgo which is like hey i know you believe this but these are the facts and so you know it's very interesting to see how we're going to flesh out the facts of the unseen it's like we're going to feel into the unseen and then be aware analytically of what's seen and real and i mean culturally because we have to think that virgo season is mastering your abilities and so you're coming into a completion of a metaphysical understanding of everything real and this metaphysical understanding doesn't have to be ghosts and fairies it could just be a belief if you think about your belief in yourself it's metaphysical because you can't see it but it still exists and so this is going to combine that but globally i think this is if we think we finished the first seven signs we're literally going to open the door into full-on chaos mm -hmm. and it's going yep. to be i think libra season is going to be more dramatic than last libra season but it's also going to be super fun it's with the moon conjunct neptune it's at a 28 degrees which too. is very very 
Piscean in itself, very, when you think about Neptune or 12th house energies, it's it's um, the astral realm, it's the unseen, and it, and it can mm -hmm. be ghosts and apparitions and oh, fogs and <laughs> visions and all kinds of things. It's very like crystal ball, it's very mystical and magical. So on one hand, you know, when we think about Pisces, especially the later degrees, it's like you can get lost in the chaos, the paranoia, the fear, the pandemic, the um, the illusions of what you see on the television or, or what people believe, what you believe or what you hear, because it, it can be believe. vibrational as well. So you have two options during this full moon. One is to give way to the um, hysteria. That's like, the, like pretty much the easiest way to put it and buy into the fear and buy into what's going on and then spiral out. Or you can stay in your lane, focus on grounding your energy, focus on your vision, focusing on uh, what your beliefs are, you know, kind of blasting out all of those lower vibrational energies with meditation, um, self-reflection, sleep, um, awareness, you know, the axis of Pisces and Virgo always deals also with um, addiction and the difference between what is um, physically healthy and uh, spiritually healthy or, or psychologically healthy. So there's going to be a lot of like reevaluating like our relationship with um, medications, um, healthcare, addictions, uh, substances, um, and and healing, right? Healing, like I think hospitals or um, people coming to aid or therapists or spiritualists True or that. healers. So and and that's what I love about the zodiac is that it's really six signs that are complementary. So you, right. you can't really look at Virgo without Pisces. Virgo may be the adult in the room that's like, hey, did you guys take your vitamins? But Pisces is like, well, yeah, but you know, I'm outside and I'm meditating and I'm getting my sunlight and right. like I spend time out, you know, like connecting with the universe. And so there is this topic that's gonna come up here in the next month. Yeah. Super serious topics, especially when you think of the later degrees of um, Pisces, mental health, suicide prevention, um, anything pertaining to addiction, isolation, prisons. Definitely. In, in a way, like the third dimension Earth is like a prison it is the final stop right sure. like we're yeah. here because you're here we're to here die to, literally to die and also supersede and like move through some of our um i don't know some of our karma like you i think maybe to die. we're here just to or like to transcend that live. definitely transcendence and my question for you is let's get some degree theory because i know step astrology Ooh. 28 is step 10 i manifest so you're literally manifesting a divine change of your real perspective through analysis but What's the degree theory say? Uh, degree theory for um, rest in peace, Mr. Nikola Stanovich. Yeah, my OG. <laughs> um, degree theory would basically say it's a 28. So right. it's a double Pisces in a Pisces. So it's double really? 12. Yeah, so it's 12. So one, 28 is a Pisces, is Pisces degree. Yeah. I thought so then 29 would be, would be Pisces, right? Oh no, you're right. Twenty eight. What am I saying? I can't do math. Twenty eight so is going to be. Um, it's going to be cancer. Cancer. So it's cancer. Okay. Shoot, shoot, shoot. So it's a cancer degree, and then we've also That's got it on degree. the axis of Pisces. So I still okay. So then it would apply more so in a sense of like being confined to our homes, which still connects you know? to Pisces too because they, and they it's try. interesting that it's the polar opposite of yeah. your theory, which is the net ten. Right. Right. So the, still the it's the Taurus degree that I manifest. Yeah. Which is wild. Yeah. So in a way, I mean. I see this more as stuff pertaining to our roots, our home, um, being bound to our home, finding out maybe that there's further confinement within the home, um, endings revolving around home, emotional. But I, I see this as just like an emotional kind of like peak point where you're either gonna break down or you're gonna break through. And I love that she's mentioning suicides because I just get the vision that so many people are gonna snap because we have to take into account that 2020 really sparked this whole global I want to say change, but you have to think that with all of this in fixed signs, with this intensifying energy, there's so many people mentally that have been intensifying their stress and all sorts of negativity. And this is that boom. We're tired. Mm -hmm. People are tired. You know, even people who are quote unquote thriving in the midst of the pandemic and have the luxuries of being able to work from home and still have a job and have a roof over their head and they're not hurting. On a psychological level, when we look at what's happened, you know, for us as humans, which have been confined to our homes for the better part of the last 18 months, 
you know, people aren't talking about the rise in suicides. People aren't talking about the rise, rise in issues with opiate addictions. People aren't talking about the fact that, you know, you know, alcohol sales and things have intermittently hit all-time highs. Like, there's no coincidence that mm -hmm. people are using substances. And I'm a firm believer that if you don't willingly use your Neptune, you lose it. Ooh. Have I talked to you about this? That even makes more sense as we're both, like, we're very Capricorn Neptunian. Neptunes. Which is Capricorn I use, so yeah. it's like using your intuition. If you don't use your Neptune, you lose it. Meaning, right. you can, and this is just me, I feel like I watch more television now than I did the last couple of years. More so just because it's like, I don't know, maybe I, it's just like that's my unwinding at night. But I'm not watching like TV where I watch TV and I watch ads, unless I watch sports. It's just me watching like <laughs> documentaries or, you know, things on like YouTube or I'm, I'm watching movies. But I'm not somebody who like wants to wake up every day and turn the television on. And, and I've bet I've become, especially since my Saturn return, because I have Saturn conjunct Neptune, like I've become somebody who's watched less and less television. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's been better for me. And like now I opt not even to really watch or read the news or listen to the news and it's better I for me. So if news gets to me, it gets to me great. Yeah. But Neptune can be you losing your sense of inspiration or spiritual connection through becoming too fixated on a television or on a screen or in a cult, whatever, whatever your Neptune is. Mm -hmm. If you're not using it to detach, tune out, meditate, think, and meditation doesn't have to be like this um, really kind of, yeah, like, <laughs> you know, kind of like spiritual snobbery, like, oh, mm -hmm. well, if you don't meditate for an hour a day, then what are you even doing with your life? Like some people meditating is running. Some people it's listening to music, writing music, it's drawing. Do you it's... know what I realized my meditation was? What? It hit me. I My Capricorn moon was like, all right, Michael, we're gonna do something very simple. I need you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> and you're that's laughing. That's hard right? for you because, right. yeah, I know that's hard for you. You're laughing, right? But I can't make it over three minutes without thinking or just talking. And so I realized, oh, okay, that's my meditation, just to clear my mind. And not saying I could be doing whatever, but like I will go off on tangents and just be like, da -da 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 and it's just like, it's gotta be so hard having Mercury on your ascendant. Just that God. one like forty-eight hour period that I had it, I went fucking nuts. And every time I have Mercury on my ascendant, <laughs> I do that. And it's worse right now because it's in a trying to it's Saturn Jupiter. Like so I'm just like wanting to just social justice warrior all over the oh internet. Oh my god! But but. What's cool is she like, killing the memes though. You killing the memes. That's the only reason why I'm on social though. media. Yeah. I gotta give the people what they want. Yeah. The world's a fucked up place, man. You and I see some, memes you from you. Memes. I don't see from anywhere else. So like, right. you plug, you plug, plug. Mm -hmm. But you have to take your Neptune back. So you have to whether take that's just shutting back. the fuck up. Right? It, it, for me, it that can is. Be. It is. For me, honestly, I realize my Neptune because it's in the fourth is just like being able to have like peace in the home like if the home Ooh, is like quiet and it's deep. like comfortable or like you know just being alone or like being able to sleep in like that's my neptune like that's literally deep. that and yeah. like i always have animals around because it's my sixth house ruler so it's like I, I like having an animal in the house like that calms me down mm. but it's different for every person and so if you're kind of giving into the neptune oh, where society so is like yeah drink the vodka take the prescription get sucked into watching mma fights or or just commercials. Like, that's the other thing. Like, I've noticed I watch commercials. I don't rarely, I very rarely watch television. But when I watch television with commercials, I'll watch TV for like an hour and I'm like, why am I craving Burger King? Like, why do I want to eat Domino's? Why do I need to go shopping? Why like, did I there's eat some that weird last subliminal night. shit going that's on. That's crazy. Like, I ordered Burger King last night. Do you watch commercials a lot? Do you watch TV? I, my TV is YouTube and like Netflix. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what it is, but that's, when I'm, when I'm I watch. watching television regularly, I get all these But there's ads on there, too. So it's basically like TV. I you know. feel like there's some weird subliminal shit. Oh, there's yeah. some, like, Illuminati flash screens, like, bye, 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 like, eat, like, consume I remember taking a grade school on. class where they showed us about subliminal messages, yeah. and they, like, slowed down an ad, and there's, like, Doop! Like, you yeah. wouldn't see it because it's flashing yeah. and so fast, and it's like, oh, shit. And they're teaching us, like, oh, yeah, advertisers use these messaging and everything. And I think I was in, like, seventh grade or, like, maybe it was in high school. Maybe it was ninth grade. But, like, it was it was fascinating. Something about that just really, it rubs me the wrong way. So I've gotten into the <laughs> habit of, like, really encouraging people, especially the last year, with just the aspects between Neptune and Pluto. Like, 
take your fucking Neptune back, yeah. work with it collectively, find a way to work through it. So and it's like a muscle. You gotta you gotta flex it, you gotta stretch it, or it'll get weaker and weaker. You gotta strengthen it. But also Saturn and Pluto get a bad rap for being like, you know, the 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 underlords of the evil ones of the, the dark zodiac lords. but like man if, if you're somebody who's gone through a neptune opposition or a neptune conjunction or a neptune square neptune can be the fucking villain well neptune is in my opinion the ultimate villain neptune gets away with every crime and no one understands neptune personally planets aren't good or bad right so like pisces is the most divine pisces neptune is the transcendent and that's how I see these, like the higher the zodiac sign, the greater the power. And because the greater the power, the greater the evil. If you think Capricorn is integrity and government, well, if a government turns corrupt, the dark side of Capricorn, it's the greatest evil. Just right. like Neptune transcendence. We are also born with Saturn and Neptune in the same sign. Yeah, so. that's true. And I always laugh because it opposes Jupiter. So I'm always like joking and being like, you know, I seem like super well behaved. <laughs> but like, I am the villain. Like, I love, to, I love to fucking stir the pot. I live for that shit. The antagonist. But I'm glad you mentioned that because Neptune in Pisces is fraudulence. If we're talking about it not living up like, to its divine potential. Like crypto potential. mining? Crypto mining. Oh, yeah, I, I got frauded. How um, many times did you get hit with that? What? Oh, so I actually got hit with that once before the Nigerians scammed me. But it was it was another website that, honestly, I have to take the L. Because if I did, like, <laughs> even a little research, I would have noticed it was a scam. Like, it wasn't until after the fact I look at the testimonials and two testimonials were the same from, like, different countries. I was like, oh. This is so fucking fake. So I, it's my fault. I should have. I, I thought I was gonna get a cookbook. Not gonna lie. But I, I thought I thought it was a certain process. It is what it is. So it, yeah. But so I guess the long and short of it is, is that basically, so like, <laughs> Virgo season really yeah. ends with some massive climactic things kind of happening. And then, yes, then, it's a culmination at 28 degrees. We're coming into the climax for sure. So, and that's happening on the 20th of September, mm -hmm. literally about a day later, early in the day on September 22nd. Boom, we're in Libra season. And this starts with the moon being in Aries. The sun right. does not do well in Libra. Mars does not do well in Libra because... It's automatically the sun is the ego, which wants to be very personal. Mars also does well in Aries, which is very personal. Both of these moving in close proximity together mm -hmm. um, through the sign of Libra is automatically taking our personal drives and focus and putting it through the lens of Libra. So it's like this hyper focus on other people, what right. other people are doing. Where it's exalted in Aries, where it's all about you with others or... In, in relation to the environment around you. And if we, if we go a little bit into the mythology and the story of the sun and its fawn Libra, we know that Libra represents air. We know that as an air sign, we can say Libra is a celestial battalion of angels. And we know the ruler, the prince of the power of air is the morning star, Venus, Lucifer. And so we know that the prince of the power of the air fell and took a third of heaven with it and we know a third of heaven is Libra. If we, if Aquarius is a, is a third of heaven and Gemini is a third of heaven, this is where that the Bible gained inspiration from the fall, from astrology. This is why the sun of glory, Christ is in its fall in Libra, but the story doesn't end there. Astrologers will know that the sun isn't doomed for hell. It progresses through the underworld and then it gains ascension back into light in Sagittarius. So but Libra you know, is also the bridge between Virgo and Scorpio. Yep, Virgo life and Scorpio death. Scorpio used to be one, and Ooh, uh, Libra true. came in and formed as the bridge between Virgo and Scorpio the to gateway help of the gods. as the gateway. Yeah. Right. Right. Correct. And the, I would say the thing that fascinates me most about the beginning of Libra season, and by the way, like I've confirmed this with many Libras or progressed Libras. Le if you think about Eminem, if you think about Will Smith, like the way this plays out through Libras, are they fallen angels? I don't want to believe that, but I've heard Libras say that they work with fallen angels to help them purify, right? But like Libras will reach an attainable height of success that no one else will ever reach, and then they'll fall from that. You know why? And then they have to regain purity and ascend again. So 
if you believe that cancer is the gateway for man or the entryway of the soul. Right. For right, Libra, right. it's in the 10th house. Right. So there's a lot of, um, I what? think, because of that 10th house of like the long overarching themes of how they find ways to keep being reborn or whatever is literally integrating their soul work through their career. Deep. So, yeah. So we see the process. Yeah. Yeah. That I've never heard. I've, I've never heard a reason for why. So that's super deep. Like the 10th house cancer makes so much sense. And I've always seen cancer as like a portal coming out of Gemini, too. So the thing that fascinates me the most about the beginning of Libra season, though, is Venus opposite Uranus. To me, that looks that like, just lays the groundwork. Right basically for the whole season because you've got sun in a place where it doesn't do so hot you've got right. mars in libra yeah, so it's so a little deep. bit unbalanced and sluggish or thinking of other people but this is right on the heels of venus and scorpio having come out of a square in with detriment. saturn in detriment mm -hmm. and in opposition to uranus so off the bat september 22nd is like holy fuck <clears throat> by, by, and mercury's getting ready to station retrograde <clears throat> So there's a lot of wild things happening. I think Mercury is actually going to hang out at 24 degrees, 25 degrees. So it's slowing down. Mm -hmm. But on the 22nd, yeah, Venus is, is coming into its opposition with Uranus. So Venus being the ruler of Libra, partnerships, values, money, commerce, is being majorly antagonized um, by Uranus. So it's like... Boom, people move into action. The sun and Mars move very closely all the way really up until, man, I think it's like somewhere where they finally have the Kazemi. Right after the new moon. On the 9th. So pretty much the 22nd of September on, the sun and Mars move very quickly together. And it it's passionate. It burns up. On one hand, we may see people... Um, moving towards partnership and working collectively with other people. I think that's the kind of the silver lining throughout the th throughout the Libra season because also it makes a trine to Saturn in Aquarius and then eventually it'll make a trine to Jupiter in Aquarius. Um, but nevertheless, like people are going to be starting and stopping relationships very quickly, moving into relationships very quickly, leaving people very quickly, starting fights with partners, um, divorcing, possibly even as these come into squares with Pluto. And it's like one thing that I really sat and I meditated on because I kept thinking like, okay, well, how can I explain this to people in a way that's different than the masses of astrologers that are on the internet? And the conclusion that I came to is this Libra season is probably the final stop. And those of you guys who have watched my content for years know, I talked about this in 2019. For, for the entire year of 2019, I kept saying, the universe is going to check everybody's asses the beginning of 2020, and we're going to see something that we never saw coming. Right. Okay, So I'm telling you this again. There is something important about Libra season where it's really highlighting what relationships are really made of, and that oftentimes relationships aren't super butterflies, rainbows, everybody gets along. The, the magic word is compromise, and where compromising and mediating really allows us to see other people's perspectives mm -hmm. and really meet in the middle and build stronger relationships. And I think you see that with the trines from the Sun and Mars to Saturn, the Sun and Mars in trines to Jupiter. And while oh, the Mercury trines open it, oh yeah, Mer well, yeah, but Mer oh, the Sun will do it too. Oh, you mean subsequently, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's basically saying there is hope for the future. We need to plan into the future. Things can be better. We can work together collectively and in relationships, but also legally. But all of these planets, Mercury, Mars, the Sun, come into squares with Pluto and Capricorn. And it's basically saying there is this, almost like this like catharsis that comes from unearthing all of this pain or mm -hmm. things that are out of whack or are too heavy or too controlling or too painful or things that really eventually, when we get down the line later this year and into the new year, will die off. Yeah. So you have the opportunity to like really nip things in the butt and now and like, deal with issues as they arise rather than holding right. it in and waiting exactly. until the end of the year. Yep, yep, yep. Equally, it's about prioritizing relationships and like really looking at things and like evaluating, you know, am I overlooking, am I not appreciating this person or this thing? And True like, that. where is there a lot of like, I think um, something that's really valuable in having partnership and relationship in any capacity because for some people who take advantage of this and they just quickly leave a relationship or they leave somebody or they're not fair to someone, come yeah. the end of the year, it's gonna be a really cold and lonely 
No, seriously. I, I love everything that you said, too, because in, in realistically, this time last year was before election period. So people were more polarized than ever. And like we're extending on that with decisions made through Capricorn season about everything from the elections to the pandemic to social issues that we see coming up. So I feel like Libra season is going to be the biggest test on how well you can compromise with people who don't believe what you believe in and how those relationships make or break. Cause like now this has been a whole year of tension yeah. adding up. Like you're going to, you're going to realize that certain people don't want anything to do with you anymore because you not even believe the actions you take. Cause Libra season is going to now based on the belief of the analysis Virgo 12 house to Libra, you're going to be taking actions and this is going to polarize even more you between other people who don't believe what you believe so will that relationship last or not and libra season is going to completely answer that question where realistically compromise should be available because i wouldn't think that and uh, let me let me actually step back because i wouldn't think this but like it may be deeper i was gonna say it's not that serious but maybe it is that serious and libra season is going to really like flesh this through libra quintessentially is debate if you think about i used to uh be a part of a debate forensics club but if you think about debate these are two individuals taking their facts and perception and going against each other. This happens in relationships. This happens if you think Libra seventh house is an open enemy, it's opposition. And we need debate in order to bridge, in order to kind of understand. So the capacity with which people in relationships can debate their differences, Libra is the test to see if they can move forward or not. It's gonna test all of that. And this is where, you know, whereas last year we didn't have the Aquarius energy now we have the Aquarius energy where now we made the decisions last year. We know more. OK, these are the people who I can connect with versus these are the people who don't accept me. Aquarius is all about belonging. So you're unlike last Libra season. Now there's a whole bunch of people who decided or think like you. You're going to really come into your tribe. And I think that's what makes that really fun. But the most intense part is how do you maintain your individuality while respecting differences in what other people and do. And that's so much about the sun and even Mars and Mercury right. and Libra where it can have a tendency to lose its identity yeah. maybe in partnership or in other people's beliefs or even values and social or actions, expectations, expectations yeah. but also um, in in their interests. Yeah, right like what they're that. interested in and what they're doing and their mannerisms and like you almost kind of start to lose that identity is anybody who has a libra sun <laughs> understands or a libra moon or rising or a seventh house placement like it's just inevitable south node libra too but my question for you though is the the we talked about venus opposite i didn't know that the moon was gonna so libra season starts kicks off, with, off the, with the moon and aries with the t-square though i didn't yeah, know it was kick, t-square yeah so basically so it kicks off the with, square with Mercury, the moon Pluto. coming into conjunction with chiron right and also opposing the sun yeah. and then opposing mars so something should be kind of brewing right you know the 20 21st on the heels of the full moon going into the 22nd where people take action and people are paying attention to the action of other people but the t-square that you're referencing is moon and aries square pluto yeah. off the bat yeah that's super intense because we're aware we're more assertive if we look at the moon where is mars mars is conjunct the sun so people are reacting to other people you're going to do this i'm going to do that it's very tit for tat and it can almost be a little I, I would say passive aggressive, but look at the opposition to Mercury. So on the 22nd, yeah. the moon in Aries opposes Mercury automatically. It's like, oh, you say this? Well, I'm going to hit back harder. You know, the, and this is all based off actions, too. Right. Not even people just like talking. Like Square talking Pluto. About action, so. so that Aries. happens. Then we see Mercury slowing down to come into its retrograde. Right. Mercury will spend um, from the 22nd of September... It goes retrograde on the 27th, but it'll spend from the 22nd until about maybe the 3rd in a square to Pluto. The 3rd of October. So that's a week of Mercury square Pluto. That's a week of intense conversations, uh, nitpicking, digging through information, obsessively thinking, reaching out, calling. Uncovering secrets uncovering. through conversation too. I've had so many right. clients in the last week that are like, I found this email and like it was hidden or I went through somebody's 
male or like you know it's just like it, it's and it's happening it's right. happened for me too like even things that i'm like i know that these things are coming up and then it happens and i'm like fuck yeah so the shadow is already by the time you guys are seeing this the shadow is kicking some people's ass and right. the, sh the shadow is very strong but it'll spend a week before it retrogrades so it comes off the square and then bam, trines Jupiter. Yes. That's so that's the good news. The positive thing yeah. is, I mean, I'm going to focus more on Venus because Venus is the star of the show when the right. sun is in there. So when the sun is in a sign, it is wise to track the ruler. Yes. So it works like that. Yeah, that's you awesome. got a lot of planets in, in awesome. Libra, so you just got to know it's already not working at full, <laughs> full capacity. But because Venus is moving into a yeah. Pluto or a Mars-based sign, v Venus, it is sexy. It is sultry it is seductive it is dark and beautiful and mysterious but venus in scorpio is notoriously jealous and possessive it's just it is what it is and i and, have experience <laughs> and then it comes into opposition with uranus on the 22nd and the 23rd and it's like i see the 22nd 23rd as being like when all hell breaks loose and the moon's going to be in Taurus, so yeah. we're going to feel that. That's so that's a setup, basically, for, you know, a fixed T-square. Mind you, a whole new cycle is beginning, too, with the conjunction of Mars and the Sun. Yes. So we have to respect that. Yeah, well. it's a rebirth. I, I mean, Meanwhile, Venus is completing the cycle it started when it conjunct the I think the on one hand, it's giving us the ability, because the Sun is personal, even if it's yeah. in Libra, it is personal, Ooh, to take personal actions towards being maybe more better balanced fair you know um uh, open open-minded right. um willing to mediate and negotiate because i love that trying to saturn the trying to saturn is so helpful it really helps open everything up but venus is really what i'm watching so mm -hmm. venus comes out of the opposition with the moon on the 24th it starts to try neptune it starts to try neptune so it gets a little bit more calm and um, and emotional and sensitive so certainly like around the 29th is an interesting day um because you do have venus in a trine to neptune and also in a trine to the moon in pisces excuse me in in cancer That's so it's so the 29th is like that kind of sweet spot in the midst of like the shit show where it can be great to like you know have the date you know have the nice dinner have the relaxing evening make the meal you know it's it, it smooths things over temporarily, okay? And Sun and Mars is in a trine to Saturn, so it can be the makeup right. that comes from whatever drama Just is happening. Just to speak a little on that, what do you feel about the... So I feel like you have the intensity of death in Venus and Scorpio, and then after you're feeling these extreme heart feelings or, or, or death, and that connects with Neptune that now opens up this dream. Like, we can do this together, we can do that together. And then Jupiter squares it, which expands so much possibilities. So to me, that kind of reeks of false promises and like potential delusions. But, you know, a dream Venus really can does come square true. Jupiter. So Venus does square Jupiter. So it's almost like the fight that happens, you know, the lover spat that happens the 20th through the 23rd, and okay. somebody says, oh, I wasn't texting her, I wasn't in her DMs, and it's just, it's a big misunderstanding, and it's not what you think, and then a, a week of back and forth and drama, and then they show up at your house, and they're like, I'm gonna make you dinner, and here's all these flowers, and everything's good, and they'll overdo it to smooth it over, because okay. once again, Venus is in a trine in Neptune, great, it's in a square to Jupiter, so it's also Jupiter and Aquarius, so it's like the friends that are texting you going like, nah, girl, fuck him, he ain't shit. But you fall it's for it. It's a huge blow up, that's yeah, the thing. Th there's, yeah, there's a lot of, like I said, fixed signs carry the energy of what Cardinal has already started. Right. So we look to what's going on with Libra, we're initiating fairness, fairness and balance. I've spoken about this on my channel, like Libra gets kind of like a reputation for being a pushover, but like Libra is so great in their tact in the way of mm -hmm. um diplomacy and like being able to kind of like get things moving and, and it would be in a very covert way that does not always seem manipulative to me libra is the lord of war even though the god of war is aries ruled mars i think the lords of war are libra because exactly what you said like the tact and it looking like it's peaceful but like negotiations made under the table and like and in the midst of this mercury is still in a square to pluto so now it is retrograding going back over you know the 30th of september on and in areas that it has already been venus continues to move into or through scorpio um 
I think another day where things start to kind of get interesting is when um, Venus is in a sextile to Pluto right around here, the October 2nd. So you're going to start feeling that deep need to like transform and like dig deeper and transform relationships. Um, it does receive a trine, excuse me, a square from the moon in Leo. So you got moon opposed Jupiter square Venus. So it's like more upheaval. And then Mercury moves into a trine with Jupiter on October 3rd. So that's good. It's like good news. It's like even in spite of all of this, the Mercury so what's trine direct Jupiter. Now? No, not yet. It's okay, just going retrograde. retrograde. But oh, right, right, right. once again, Venus is still the star of the show. So another day that I find Actually, interesting. Go really ahead. quick before you say that, that's what I want to ask you next. What do you feel like at this stage where before Mars was leading the pack? So how is Venus leading the pack influencing things? Because Venus is Because until like Venus it. gets out of Scorpio yeah. in October. Going over the south node too. Yeah, Sheesh. I mean, it's like it's going to keep bringing up the same thing. Yeah. So we look at like when Venus, you know, goes to about 29 degrees of Scorpio and that's like that make or break, right? It's like, okay, that's when something turns. Um, October 6th is an interesting day. New moon in Libra, sun, moon, Mars, Mercury, all in Libra in a trine to Jupiter. So it's like where we're we going, but, and Saturn kind of, um, but it, it's still opposed Chiron. And, you know, Venus is at 29. So that new moon is like a real turning point where I think a lot of people are going to be like, this is it. Either this changes or I'm done or we're doing this or that. So the, the lunar cycle, I think, from the new moon in Libra to the full moon in Aries is going to be like a real, a real turning point. Then on the 7th, Venus moves into Sag. So, okay, calms down a little bit. At least we're receiving. We're Imagine start... calming down in Sagittarius. That must be so intense. And it's, and it's <laughs> not, though, because Venus will conjunct the south node yeah. and the moon oh on the 9th. Oh, God, that's insane. The same day that Mercury, Mars, and Mercury conjunct. So there will be a Mercury, Mars, And Kizimi. then Pluto goes direct. Pluto goes direct. That's, that, that's wild. And Venus in the south node and the moon conjunct. So I look at the 19th and go, what the fuck is happening? Mercury going retrograde with Mars and the sun. It's like people joke around and be like, oh, Mercury retrograde. Like, you know, you hear from exes, but it's like, holy fuck. Like, there's really a lot of like hearing from exes. On the south node. Oh, my God. And the south node of Venus. Right. So that, especially if you're a Libra... Sun, moon, or rising. Um, maybe if you're oh, a Gemini. I forgot about that too. What do you feel about Juno, South Node, Lilith, North Node? I feel like a lot of Sagittariuses are going to reach out to their exes. That's what it feels like to me. <laughs> Which they don't usually do. But I think there may be a lot of that. And I can't help but keep looking at, you know, Venus coming into conjunction with Juno. And then on the polar opposite, you've got Lilith and Ceres in Gemini. So there's like a lot of like really bitter exes um, or people who know that you know their partners have moved on or or maybe um situations where people separated and they're like going and looking at who they're with or you're going to see like a lot of like really jealous ex-wives i mean that that's just what's going to happen it's just it's just part of the course not to mention the fact that you know venus is going to cross over the eclipse degree of that five degrees eclipse that we had in sag so yeah. it's like Things don't calm down. That's basically what we're getting at. Things don't calm down. Like once we get to the 20th of September on, the the astrology for the second half of 2021 is so intense. It's so strong until spring of next year. It's like building off of the first six signs, which is just Jesus. And, and my favorite part about Libra season is the direct motion of Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter in that order. It's like finally all this tension. Yeah. Whoosh, we're ready to move forward now that like analysis. Jupiter's gonna spend like forty days or something it, at twenty two degrees. No way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I looked into it. It's gonna be like forty days or something that Jupiter's gonna sit at twenty two degrees. So the That's nice crazy. thing is is that you know, Venus is away from the south node around the twelfth of October. It's coming into a sextile with Saturn and also a sextile with Jupiter. The Sun, Mars, Mercury is, even though Mercury's retrograde, it's building into a trine with Jupiter. So it's like, whatever needs to come out, whatever needs to be dealt with, is going to be dealt with pretty much during, you know, the first two weeks of October. And then what's really, where things get kind of wonky is when the Sun and Mars start coming into a square with Pluto, right when Mercury's about to go direct. So it's like basically saying like, okay, now we really kill something off. 
conflict, right? Like we really kill off like the old relationship or we really kill off the imbalances or or the concept or, or the or the, the, the sense lessons. of settling. Right. Right? I could see settling because all of that is Queen Kung's Neptune where, you know, you ha finally kind of like remove the Scooby-Doo mask off the situation and you're Applying like, Fuck. the logic to the beliefs and like this is what's actually happening, which I feel like Libra season is going to be so instrumental. Eighth house to Neptune, it's like, okay, we've been taking for, we've been taking the word of what's been broadcasted to us and what we believed personally versus now seeing it contextually with other people. You know what I mean? It's going to just break through false beliefs. It's going to break through stuff that we deluded ourselves and with other people. So honestly, now that I'm seeing more of Libra season, it's... it's and Mercury is getting ready to station around the 15th. Yeah. And okay. go direct. And go direct. And it's in opposition, opposition to Chiron. To Chiron. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of like wounds. Like, you yeah. did this. This has hurt my feelings. Blah, blah, blah. How can you believe that? Blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, I guess the one positive is that, you know, like I said, the sun and the sun and Mars will go over the same degrees as where Mercury retrograded. The sun comes into a square with Pluto on the 17th of October. Mars direct. and then and then Mercury goes direct in opposition to the moon on the 18th and then Mars starts coming into a square with Pluto the Mars square Pluto I think will be the most intense October 21st yeah ironically when the moon is conjunct Uranus square Jupiter so Mercury is making get processing information the sun is making you aware Mars is going to have you act off of what you process and are aware of and then Mercury will go direct and have you and the full moon the process, is going to be around 26 degrees on the 19th in Aries. That's what? Uh, that's wild. And it's basically a part of that T-square. So yeah, it's a, that's, a, that's still quite a big T-square. This is why I personally believe that at this stage, conflict is going to like kick off. I don't know exactly what kind of conflict or how, but like some kind of war, conflict, something very intense. Yeah, globally for sure. Well, I yeah. mean, it, it's going to happen because it's going to initiate things. But I mean, I guess... The big thing that I would say is like anybody who's got planets between, you know, 22 and 26 degrees as a cardinal signs. Um, Not my moon prepare. in Cap. <laughs> my moon's in Aries. My moon's it's smack dab in smack the middle of this. Right. And I remember like some of the Pluto squares that were happening like, fuck, last year, you know, it all, it all involves like my moon and Juno and a bunch of other shit so i'm just like oh here we go and squares to pluto involve extreme decisions that have to be made it's not necessarily like okay i'll put that off it's like that's the point of the square it's like what are you gonna do now like this is this is why it's tension so um Whew. i guess in closing you know one other thing i would say is like once the sun leaves libra and then Around everything the 22nd, that happens in Libra gets more intense. Yeah, Scorpio. then things only continue to build. I guess the one positive thing is, is like, you know, we have a little bit of time until Venus moves into Capricorn. Mm -hmm. And once Venus moves into Capricorn, we come into the shadow, basically. Venus in moves into Capricorn when the sun is Early November. Uranus. That's crazy. But then Venus will spend several months in Capricorn and we don't really have Venus move into a Venus ruled sign like Taurus um, or things don't get easier until the spring of next year. So with that being said, Jesus. like whatever skeletons need to come out the closet and once Jupiter goes into Pisces, it's uncharted territory or relationship wise so. or like whatever legal stuff that's building or separations or like we're not going to see a lot of like fairness and diplomacy. We're going to see a lot of people seeing the other side of Libra, which is like going to be like slapping people's wrists and being like, no, we're not doing this. And it's going to, it's going to become harder to, I think, find the middle ground. I think the positive thing is, is the sun, Mercury, Mars, all trines Jupiter. So it's saying like, this is where we need to go. We need to start being a little bit more aware of the future and what's best for everybody. And sometimes I think maybe doing the right thing even in relationships or the fair thing is also calling a spade a spade. True that. Right? I love how you said doing the fair thing too because that's going to be, or I just heard run the fair one where people think it's Aries that's like, oh, let's fight. But it's actually Libra. Two people agreeing to fight. It's like a duel. Yeah. It's like, let's Seventh run the house. fair one. All right, we'll take it outside. That's actually Libra. It's an extension of Aries. Boom. 
Yeah. So we might see a lot of fighting. Oh, Mars, that's yeah. so it's, it's gonna be, but it's gonna be just. It's gonna be necessary. It's gonna be like fights that like bitches had coming. R that right, or it's not like a pointless fight. It's like no, a fight it's like that was settle, settling the rug something. Or like it yeah, it has to be. It has to be settled moving forward for the result in Scorpio partnership. Boom. So. With that said, make sure you book your readings now. Um, especially if you're like Pluto, like late degrees, like Pluto and Libra, or yes, if Pluto you have Libra Sun and Rising bad, in the later sure. degrees of cardinal signs. With if Pluto you're Pluto squaring your Pluto, a Cap or a Cancer through. Rising, um, if you got yeah Saturn or Pluto, I would say in Libra or even in Aries. A lot of those those of you guys I've been talking to you guys too. Or, even those of you born 93, 94, 95 yeah. with Neptune Uranus at the end of Cap. You're yeah. awakening. Yep. The social uh, environment and, and, and interactions will awaken your intuition. You're just gonna be start to like, oh, I'm hearing things more. I'm noticing things more under the scene and stuff. So that's you awakening. It's not you going super crazy. Even though going crazy is a part of your awakening. So yeah, but we've already been there, done that. Yeah. So that was fun. That was a fun time. <laughs> Hopefully it's good for you guys. Hopefully this is helpful. I'm sure both of us will go deeper into the transits in our own channels. Um, if you have any questions or you want to let us know how it's playing out for you, leave us a comment below. Make sure you hit that bell button, like, comment, share, subscribe. Your support means the world to us. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys for supporting and being subscribers. Um, you keep the beer fun going and you help us continue with production costs. And join the membership already. <laughs> if for some reason you haven't, there you go. You have your incentive. I'm not even going to give you a reason. Just Yeah, just you don't need a reason. Be cool. Join us. Like, <laughs> join We're us. hearing so many cool messages Preferably from people, too, three. who are, like, telling or us do one two about, two. like, who's listening to our podcast right. and what they're doing with our podcast. And, like, people were reposting things, so it's kind of cool to see that, like, it's getting out Playing there. Playing it in their Uber drives. Yeah, doing the people. Lord's work. <laughs> Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you. That's all right, up. guys. Well, we'll see all of you very soon. Um, enjoy Libra season, and I don't know. Good God luck. Speed. God speed. May the odds be, be in your, your favor. favor. <laughs> <laughs>